but there have been some iconic and beloved finishers in WWE. From the tombstone pile driver to the curb stomp, these finishers were perfect for the wrestler who used the move and eventually, over time, became synonymous with their character. Coming up with new and unique finishing moves is kinda hard. This has resulted in the majority of finishing moves being recycled and passed on to the next generation of WWE superstars. Join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 most recycled WWE finishing moves. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out our new channel, WrestleMania Shorts. Number 10. The Famouser now, The Famouser has predominantly been used by three specific WWE wrestlers as a finishing move. The first wrestler was Marty Jannetty, but his version of the move often looked awkward upon execution. The wrestler then who pillarized the move during the Attitude Era was Billy Gunn. Gunn performed the move tremendously, as he was able to get extensive height on his leap which always looked great on WWE television. Finally, Dolph Ziggler has adopted the finisher as his move and now uses it as a secondary finishing move, often preferring the super kick or the zigzag finisher. Number 9. Pay Dirt When Shelton Benjamin decided to abandon his popular T-Bone suplex finisher, fans were disappointed. Benjamin could hit the T-Bone out of nowhere, and it was a perfect fit for his character. Benjamin, upon the retirement of the T-Bone as his finisher, began to use a move known as Pay Dirt. This move sees Benjamin perform a jumping reverse STO. The move pales in comparison to the T-Bone suplex and the move relies on the person taking the move to sell it with conviction. R-Truth would later adopt the move renaming it as the What's Up and then later rebranding the move as the Little Jimmy. Number 8. The Mandible Claw The Mandible Claw is one of the more unique finishers ever presented in WWE. It was popularized by hardcore legend Mick Foley and involves a wrestler placing his middle and ring finger in the opponent's mouth and then sliding them under the tongue, pressing down on the tissue at the bottom of the mouth. The palm of the same hand is then placed under the jaw and according to Foley, this should lead to the person taking the move to black out. The move was perfect for Foley and unique finishing moves are always appreciated and this is why it was welcome when The Fiend began to use the move. The Fiend would use a move in the majority of his matches and he would even use a move on Foley himself in an incredibly memorable segment on Raw. Foley has had nothing but positive things to say in relation to The Fiend using his finishing move and this is what the WWE Hall of Famer had to say during an interview with Sporting News. I'm really happy to see him use the move and to be shifting gears of that character to make it intriguing and exciting television. Number 7. The Camel Clutch Gory Guerrero is a wrestler who is widely regarded as the innovator of the Camel Clutch finishing move, but in WWE it was the Iron Sheik who popularized the move. Since the Sheik used the move, numerous wrestlers have recycled the move as their finisher, with only a few of them having major success. Wrestlers such as Muhammad Hassan and Rusev have all used the move, but neither of them has ultimately reached the heights that the Sheik did with the submission hold. In fact, when a wrestler uses the move in modern day WWE, it's appreciated if they offer a new take on the traditional move. This was seen with Veer as his version of the Camel Clutch is known as the Cervical Clutch and looks incredibly devastating as Veer traps one single arm behind his back before locking in the sinister a clutch. Number 6. The Master Lock Upon introducing the Master Lock in WWE, Chris Masters instantly became a huge deal. The full Nelson finishing move was immensely popular with fans, so much so that WWE even launched the Master Lock Challenge segment. In a weird turn of events, the first wrestler to break the submission, that being Bobby Lashley, would end up using the move as his own finisher years later in WWE, this time known as the Hurt Lock. Lashley has had tremendous success with the move and even won his first ever WWE title with the submission in 2021. Masters has spoken at great length in relation to what he thinks of Lashley using his finishing move and this is what he had to say during an interview with Chris Van Vliet. It doesn't change the fact that the Master Lock is the OG. And I know a lot of people are going to bring up Hercules and Ken Patera, but we're talking about in the modern era, ladies and gentlemen. Sure, yeah. So, I mean... I think Hurt Lock, Master Lock would still be uh, kind of interesting. But like, you know, it only makes sense for Bobby. I've never came out on like some dirt sheets and buried Bobby. And like, here's the thing. Think about this. I mean, from my standpoint, would you rather have Bobby Lashley adopt it or some guy maybe that they push for a month who doesn't even amount? Number five, Dream Street. A Ted DiBiase Jr. opted to use a Cobra Clutch Slam for his finishing move. Dream Street paid tribute to his father, the Million Dollar Man, and could look great if the wrestler taking the move sold it effectively. Years later, Jinder Mahal would recycle the move, and his version, known as the Kalas, has received criticism from fans. 
The problem is that Mahal was WWE's resident jobber, and when he was propelled into the main event scene, his finishing move just wasn't appropriate for a main event level star, as Mahal rarely ever won a match with the move. Mahal's version often looks awkward, as he sometimes struggles to perform it correctly, leading to some fans suggesting that Mahal introduces a brand new finishing move into his arsenal. Number 4. The Breakdown The first ever WWE Undisputed Champion Chris Jericho is the King of Evolution. Over his decorated career, Jericho has added several key moves to his arsenal, including adding brand new finishing moves. In 2001, Jericho introduced a new finishing move known as the Breakdown. This was a full Nelson facebuster, and Jericho would even win his first world title with the move when he defeated The Rock at 2001's No Mercy event. The breakdown being used as Jericho's finisher would be short-lived, as Jericho would soon leave the move behind in favor of moves such as the Lion Salt and the Walls of Jericho. For the past 15 years, The Miz has used a version of the breakdown as his finishing move, and his version is known as a skull-crushing finale. Due to Jericho only using the move for a short period of his career, most fans now associate the move with The Miz, as The Miz continues to use the move on a weekly basis and will likely do so until he retires. Number 3. The Pedigree Triple H's pedigree finishing move is one of the most iconic finishing moves in WWE, and when Seth Rollins began to use it as an alternative finisher, it made a ton of sense. Rollins was involved in a storyline with the game at the time, making it a logical addition to Rollins' moveset, and he continues to use the move as a finisher to this very day. According to Triple H during an interview with Fox Sports, he gave Rollins full permission to use the move. The game added, he came to me and he was like, how would you feel about it, but given the storyline and everything else, how would you feel about me using the pedigree? I was like, if you think that benefits you, please do, like I would be honoured. And you know, and it worked for him for a while. So yeah, I was happy for him to do it. You know, there's moments in your career where things are like they say imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. So for me, if he felt like it was meaningful to him, I was glad he could use it and get something out of it. Number 2. The Stunner when Kevin Owens began to use the stunner as his finishing move, fans were curious as to what Stone Cold Steve Austin thought of his beloved finisher being used. According to Owens, it was Austin himself who gave permission to use his finisher, which was a big endorsement for the former Universal Champion. This was fitting as Austin would come out of retirement in 2022 to face Owens in the main event of Night 1 at WrestleMania 38. Austin is often nothing but praise towards Owens, and Austin is content with Owens carrying on the legacy of his celebrated finishing move. And number 1. The Cutter For Johnny Ace is widely regarded as the innovator of the Cutter finishing move, but over the past 20 years, the Cutter has become one of the most popular finishing moves in WWE thanks to Randy Orton. It was initially Diamond Dallas Page who made the popularity of the move skyrocket as he would use the move as a finisher both in WCW and WWE. But when Orton began to use the move in 2003, everything changed. Orton executed the move perfectly and he was able to hit it out of nowhere, making it one of the most exciting finishers that exist today. It was DDP himself who gave Orton permission to use the move as he was getting set to retire and Orton was without a substantial finisher. Matt Riddle has also recycled the move and now uses an RKO as his finisher. This is mainly because he's one half of RK Bro, so it'll be interesting to see if Riddle continues to use the move when the duo inevitably breaks up. But there you have it folks, 10 of the most recycled WWE finishing moves. Be sure to leave your comments down below and I'll see you next time with some more wrestling content.